Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of a new method of detecting exoplanets. Now there are already quite a lot of methods that we know of, but we just got a new one that's very original and actually something we've never thought of before. Let's talk about this and welcome to What the Math. You probably know by now that we've discovered over 4,000 um, confirmed exoplanets already as of 2019, and we're basically discovering pretty much a few every single week now. But the most common method of detecting exoplanets is this right here. This is known as the uh, transit method, and you'll see what it looks like in a few seconds when this beautiful planet passes in front of its star. You can kind of see how we now detect this uh, dip in here, which represents an exoplanet that passed in front of the star. And we've discovered over 3,000 planets this way already, mostly using the Kepler telescope, but now we have another telescope known as TESS doing the same. The second method um, that we often use is known as radial velocity, and this is when a star and a planet um, basically kind of pull on each other, and you can detect this pull by looking at the spectrum of the star and seeing that it actually has a bit of a Doppler shift, a bit of a redshift, blue shift, redshift, blue shift, which is very periodic and indicates that something really massive orbits around it. This is usually how we find a lot of really massive planets. We also have this really cool method based on Einstein's general uh, theory of relativity. It uses the um, gravitational microlensing effect, which you can see right here as the planet passes in front of the star, and it kind of creates this unusual flare that's unexplainable in any other way. And these flares often repeat, suggesting that something orbits around this particular star, and this is something we've seen um, almost a hundred times now. In other words, we've discovered almost a hundred different exoplanets using this method. The most obvious method is, of course, the so-called direct imaging, literally looking at the uh, planet and seeing it somewhere out there. That's of course if the planet is really really big. We do have to cover the star as you can see and um, this is the only way that those planets can be seen by basically removing the light from the star and then seeing the planets. We've discovered a few planets this way as well. And another interesting method that we often use uh, but haven't really been that successful with is known as astrometry and this is when a planet pulls on the star but here we're looking at the star from basically the side view and we kind of get to see it move up and down left and right a little bit as if something was shifting it around. This is of course the shift caused by the planet. But unfortunately this method is really difficult to use so we haven't really discovered that many planets with it. There are a few other methods um, that have been used and have been successful as well, and for the most part, transit method has been the most successful method to date. We've discovered way, way more planets this way than in any other way. So by seeing planets pass in front of the star, we're usually able to very accurately predict their existence. But the scientists often look for new methods and try to discover new techniques to find even more planets in our goal to eventually find something that sort of resembles our own planet. Now, today we'll talk about one such method that was just recently discovered and officially proposed, but it only really works for much, much younger stars, specifically stars that are only beginning their life cycle. And the star we're talking about is known as HD 163296. We're slowly zooming into that star right now, and it's basically an extremely, extremely young star, very, very new in terms of creation of the planets and, of course, the actual star itself, and it still has its so-called protoplanetary disk. You'll see in a few seconds what it looks like in this beautiful um, composition made by NASA, and right there in the middle is the star that we're talking about today. Now, the actual protoplanetary disk looks a little bit different. It more or less looks something like this. And what's interesting is that there are these unusual rings in the middle, basically these empty spaces, which we often thought um, may represent a planet, but it's not necessarily confirmed because a star could technically also cause these effects. And so a new idea or a new technique needed to be proposed in order for us to see what's really happening here. And so the scientists from Michigan, whose paper you can find in the description below, we're able to discover this really original and extremely interesting technique to um, essentially see exoplanets that are just being developed. And their idea revolves around the fact that new planets will most likely produce a lot of turbulence and a lot of motion 
as they move around the protoplanetary disk. In other words, as this new planet moves through all of this dust, it will very likely kick out a lot of dust, create a lot of motion um, in its surroundings, and create a kind of a very turbulent um, environment that could technically be detected by looking at unusual motions of gas um, in various vicinities of these rings. And so if we take a look at this animation here, we'll notice that there are actually these unusual patterns coming from three locations around this star, creating unusual up and down motion um, around it, and also in a very predictable periodic pattern that is usually sort of significant in that it can only be produced by planets or some other massive objects. And so by looking at the star system, they discovered three such objects, all of them relatively massive, all of them relatively large, but at the same time really, really far away from the actual star. The closest planet here was at a distance of about 87 astronomical units away, which is double the distance of Pluto from the Sun. The next closest planet was around 140 AU, and the last one was about 240 AU. That is really, really far away. In other words, this unusual star system is a lot more extreme than our own Sun and our own solar system. But nevertheless, by observing these waterfall-like formations in the gas, the scientists behind this paper were able to quite thoroughly analyze this and also conclude that it's very, very likely that it's caused by these massive planets, probably within about one mass of Jupiter. Although they believe the closest planet is probably around half masses of Jupiter and the farthest planet might be the most massive with two masses of Jupiter, with the middle planet being somewhere in between possibly just one mass of Jupiter. They also discovered that a lot of this gas was carbon monoxide, suggesting that it's not that different from what our own solar system has as well. But most importantly, by studying this particular star system, we might be able to discover what happened to our own sun back then, about 4.5 billion years ago, because it sort of is like looking back at our own past, our own history, and trying to find out how all of this changed over time and what may have happened to the solar system to make it the way it is today. Although this system is slightly different and it's definitely a lot more massive as well. Now it's very likely we're not going to be using this method as much as the transit method where the planet just passes in front of the star, but it's still a really cool new discovery and will very likely allow us to understand how planets form and uh, discover new planets around these protoplanetary disks out there. And what's really awesome about all of this is that most of these planetary search techniques were really only discovered within the last 10 years or so. So just imagine what we're going to be able to discover in the next 10 years. There are probably going to be so many new techniques and so many new discoveries once we launch the James Webb telescope that's going to be able to search for a lot more different planets out there. But I guess until that future, that's really it. It's definitely a cool discovery, you can learn more about it in the link in the description below. But for now, that's it. Subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. And maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.